Hey guys, so today I'm just going to go over how I edit my raw wedding files. Um, this one actually um, is now saved as a TIFF because I did go in and clean up um, some of the dead branches and leaves off of the ground. So it is now um, in TIFF format because I saved it out of Photoshop to, to back in here. but. Um, it's this going to be the same process. So the first thing that I always do is start with just checking the crop, um, seeing the lines, making sure everything's centered, and I'm happy with um, the alignment of the picture. And from there, the next most basic thing is to um, do your lens correction here. You can find the lens correction if you scroll down in the panel. And then I go to Profile and Enable Correction. Um, here it's got the Canon already selected and my lens that I shot on. And um, Distortion, sometimes I'll mess with that, just kind of depends. Um, moving it all the way to the right when you have them centered will usually be a little bit more flattering for their faces. So it kind of pushes it in. Um, but if they're close to the edge, then it can give them an alien head, so you have to be careful with that. But um, the next thing is if there's some gray in the picture, you can use the custom dropper tool. Um, if you don't have any gray, then you can just do it manually. This picture needed um, to be a little bit warmer and add a little bit magenta. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks there. Um, exposure is pretty good. We might bring it down just a little bit to kind of add a little bit more punch. Um, contrast too, we can add just a little bit. Highlights, um, I usually do move that down a little bit and the shadows up just a little bit and then the whites up and the blacks down. Not always, but usually that will look pretty good. So right about there. So we can look at before and after that it is right here. And now there, it just gives it a lot more punch. Clarity, um, if they have really good skin, um, sometimes we'll bring that up just a little bit. All that does is add, we'll make it real extreme. Um, it can almost end up with an HDR effect if you're not careful. I'm not really not a fan of that, but I believe it adds contrast in the midtones is its official job. Um, so that can look nice, bumping that up just a little bit, but you want to be careful. Um, vibrance, because this was a wedding where the colors were so beautiful, I do want to bring that up, but you do want to be careful um, over doing that as well. A lot of times if you bring the vibrance up, you'll want to bring the orange down because you'll get um, Oompa Loompa skin. In this case, their skin still looks really nice, so we don't have to worry about it. But I do like using that versus the saturation because we'll let's look at the the saturation to me looks a lot more tacky than the vibrant slider. I don't know. Tell me what your opinion is. Here I'm not really gonna mess with the curves channels. I'm pretty happy um, with them being at um, where they're they're at, but we will go to RGB into here and just give it a tiny bit of a Z curve. Again, kind of like what we did above. I just like to add that in and give it a little bit of contrast. Um, hue, it really depends if you're going for the traditional look. I wouldn't really mess with the greens for film. You'll usually add a lot more blue to your greens. Um, but for this picture, I think it looks pretty good where it's at. We can move it over just a little bit, but I don't want to mess with it too much. Um, the other thing I'll adjust a lot is the skin tones. Um, going left, as you can see, gets red to the orange, and going right will add yellow. Um, in this picture, I, I actually, I think I like, I think I do like it right where it's at. Um, and sometimes too, I'll bump the luminance of their skin by moving the orange slider, but again, that looks pretty good too, so I don't want to mess with that too much. Um, split toning is cool if you want to add some crazy color effects. I'm not really going to do that with this picture. I want to keep it pretty classic. Um, sharpening, I'm not going to mess with that. That's a whole other video for sure. Um, vignetting for classic pictures is really great. Um, 
You can do it either down here or you can also use your radial filter uh, there um, and uncheck invert and bring it down. Either way, whichever one you like to use. I like them both at different times. The other one's a lot more circular and using this um, one down here, you get a lot more of a um, edge vignette and have less control over like, for example, if you don't want it on her hands. So like we can go, I'll show you if we use that one. So I'll bring it really far down and I'll usually bring it super dark so that I can see where the edges of the vignette fall off, especially if you're playing with the sharpen because you do not want to accidentally black out their faces. Um, but we'll bring, now that we know where it, where it falls off, we'll bring it up just a little bit. And then you can play with it here to feather it more or less. And the good thing too about using this over the other vignette is that you can play with the sharpness too if you wanna um, put some more blur on the background. So I am pretty happy with that. So um, down here, this is usually stuff I'll mess more with if I'm trying to emulate film. Um, moving it to the right though for your shadows will give you a warmer picture and this will give you a cooler picture. We don't have too much dark so it's not as noticeable. If you have a picture with a lot of black, you'll really see how much purple it will add. Um, same thing with this. I'm not really going to mess with any of this stuff. I'm pretty happy with the picture. So that is it. Here is the before and the after. So I hope you guys liked it. Leave comments and tell me if you would have done something different or how you like to edit your pictures and see you guys later. Bye.